tax. It's a fun topic. Everyone likes tax, everyone likes tax time, as it is that time of year, and six days, it's the 25th today. Um, six days time, for those that have to put in tax returns, you need to put in tax returns and make sure that's all in. Um, unless you're going through a tax agent when you can pretty much get it in whenever. Um, there's a little bit, little bit of dispensation there. Um, it was really, just on a, on a side note and personal note, it's really interesting with this because when I was working in the UK and getting paid in the UK, it just automatically happened. I didn't even realize the tax year had finished because their tax year is like April or something. It's, some, it's a weird point in time. And literally, I just got a letter from the tax department over there and just saying, will you pay too much tax? Have some money. Um, I had no idea that was the case. So it was, didn't have to put in a tax return, didn't have to do anything. They just automatically gave me a refund, which is a really nice thing. Um, and actually timed pretty well for what I was doing. The reason we cover this topic um, is not necessarily because management, this is different to the topics that we've done before. Um, as cash flow is going to be different to the to topics we've done before. But the reason this is different to the prior topics is management really don't get a choice in doing anything here. So what we're looking at is more the process of how this works. Um, but not only the process of how it works, but actually just stepping back and trying to figure out what these things are in the first place because they're not that well understood. Um, so what we're trying to pick up on this is that there is tax legislation and there is a way that companies calculate how much tax that they actually have to pay the government. Um, it's one of the two law subjects that you do as part of your major, I think it's called, is it revenue law still or is it taxation law? So it's now called taxation law. And you look at the Income Tax Assessment Act, that's, that's the, the tax side of things. What we're interested in is how we provide information to users about tax stuff and about income tax stuff, not just, this isn't about GST or fringe benefit tax or anything like that, this is about income tax. Um, so we're gonna have a look at the difference between how accounting deals with tax and how tax deals with tax. We're then gonna have a look at current tax and how the regulation, um, how the standard looks at current tax and how we deal with that. And then we're gonna look at what these things are because they're not well understood um, and it's something that we just wanna explore. Now this isn't in your slides, but I thought this was a, instead of just me talking about deferred tax assets and deductible temporary differences, we'd actually have a look at some numbers from actual companies to give you some background as to why this stuff is an important area to look at, even though management don't necessarily get to make choices about things. Um, so the first company I want to bring up is Fortescue. Now, what I've got along the side here is profit before tax. So this is a line item directly before they have their income tax expense. You've got, even though I've just got it as expense, this is your income tax expense. This is income tax paid from the statement of cash flows. This is your current tax liability, which is from your balance sheet. And this is your deferred tax liability from your balance sheet. Now, these will all be available online. So I mean, if you, I mean, you can write them down if you want, but I just want you to get a sense of what's going on here. So. When most people look at, talk about companies and the amount of tax that they pay, they're probably not gonna get much further than looking at the profit and loss statement. They're gonna look at the profit and loss statement and say, these guys made profit before tax of 2.2 billion. They had a tax expense of 704 million. They paid tax of $704 million. But that's not what they gave to the government. That is tax expense as calculated under SSB 112. What they actually paid in tax that year was $123 million to the government. So there's quite a significant difference between 123 million and 700 million. But, and we're gonna come across this as well. This, for this example, that may not be a problem because this current tax liability picks up how much they do owe the government. And that comes in at about just over half a billion. Add those two together, what's that? 670, 674 compared to 704. That seems about right. I mean, yeah, they've been a bit slow in pain, but that seems about okay. Deferred tax liabilities we're gonna ignore for the moment, but they have a deferred tax liability of 221 million. Bendigo and Adelaide Bank, a profit much less, about 15% of these guys, and yet in terms of the amount of tax that they actually pay, they actually pay only $2 million less. 
their profit is only 15% of what Fortescue's is, but the amount of tax that they've given to the government is pretty close to what Fortescue have done. Um, their tax expense is actually really similar to their tax paid, so there's no real difference there. Um, they even owe 87, so if you add these two up, what they've paid and their they're owing to the government is actually more than they're showing on their, on their profit and loss statement. AMP, kind of looks similar to Fortescue, $700 million expense. They only paid 150 and they only had a current tax liability of 80 odd. They're suddenly starting to become a bit of a difference. They've got $700 million of expense versus $230 million of, I suppose, what they've paid and what they owe to the government they're starting to become quite a big difference there. And Bank of Queensland, they lost money, and yet they showed basically no expense, actually it's a negative expense, um, but they paid 150 odd million dollars to the government. So even at this point, if you're not too sure why that difference is occurring, all I want you to take away from this, and this is kind of one of the key takeaways from what we're talking about today, is what you show as an expense on the profit and loss statement may have absolutely nothing to do with how much you actually pay in tax. It may be related, and there is a relation sitting there, but it may not be as close as what a lot of people think. So that's the first thing I just want to draw your attention to. Now, accounting profit is what you've been doing for the last 10 weeks. I mean, and obviously looking at balance and um, balance sheet effects, but profit and loss, how we come up with the long service leave expense, how we deal with financial assets, how we deal with depreciation, impairments, revaluations, lease expenses. Accounting profit is based on this full set of rules. Actually, I actually feel I haven't been working out enough in the last two weeks because I actually bothered to bring this all the way down from level three, but this is how accounting profit gets made. No. Had that jump through so quickly. Where is it? Okay. Um, so that's how accounting profit gets made. Tax profit, if you're doing taxation law, is un under the Income Tax Assessment Act, and it works quite differently in certain situations. And there are going to be timing differences. And so the upshot of all that is what accounting profit is and what taxable profit may not be the same thing. Um, there are different rules to it. Um, Tax rules are much, more, are much more focused on reliability. Now, I'm going to just use an example from a couple of weeks ago, but you think of how we calculate long service leave expense. Now, long service leave expense is an accounting expense. We know how that gets calculated. We've gone through that calculation. We figured it all out. We come out with an expense item. But you cannot use that, you cannot use that expense number as a tax deduction. You can, only claim, you can only claim the tax deduction under the Income Tax Assessment Act when that employee takes leave. Now, that's, I would hazard, because we know there's a huge amount of inputs that go into, or a huge amount of estimations in the inputs which go into that expense number. So if we're coming up with all of those, and if we know the inputs that we're putting in, that can have an effect on the amount of tax that we pay, think about how those incentives would work with management. So, the tax rules are much more are much more reliable in terms of the numbers that they wanted to get out of it because they need something a lot harder than what some of the accounting numbers are. Accounting, because it's more geared towards users, it's got to be close, but it doesn't necess have to have necessarily have to be sort of bang on. It's just got to be close enough that you can make a reasonable decision. Um, accounting is more accrual based, Ta tax is more of a mix. Um, I'll let you guys have a look through those things at your own, t at your own leisure. Um, so examples, long service leave we've talked about, um, revenue in advance. So if you've ever booked, you know, if you've ever flown somewhere, how many, I mean, I'm assuming most people have, have gone overseas on a plane or if it's coming here on a plane, how many of you guys have ever done so and paid for that flight after you've taken it? No one, you, it just never happens. You pay for flights always in advance. And we know, and you guys have covered this probably numerous times, that's revenue in advance. The airline doesn't get to recognize that as profit or as revenue at the time. They've got to wait until you actually take the flights. But for tax purposes, depending on the, 
the details of it, it's often when the cash is, cash is received that the taxation ha happens. So if that crosses financial years, then you've got a timing issue because the taxation will happen in one year, but you're going to see the revenue from an accounting point of view in another year. So we need to somehow take that into account as we're working out how to come up with our taxable profit. Well, it's a big slide. Um, again, this is more for background information. Um, just some of the differences. These long service leave, holiday pay, warranties expense, how we deal with doubtful debts. Um, these sort of situations, I would, you should know that they're different. And other situations that you may come across in exams or in tutorial work, we will generally tell you how the tax would account for that thing if you've not seen it before. But for something like doubtful debts, you only get the deduction when you actually write it off. When you have a warranty expense, we have a provision for warranties that gets created, but you only get the, you only get the tax deduction when you actually make good on the warranty claim. So there's sort of different points in terms of when the accounting deals with it and when the tax deals with it.